One of the biggest problems people seem to have when it comes to property investing or flipping houses is actually where to find the deals. Now, I'm currently sat outside a property viewing. I'm about to go in and have a look at a property. But the other day, I ran a property training day. And um, in that day, I shared 17 ways to find or 17 places to find high quality property deals. And in this video, I'm going to share a short snippet covering those 17 ways. The way I like to look at it is you got to do deals and you got to do them fast. And I kind of work off of this framework. The first step is we've got to find the deal because if you can't find the deal, you're going to struggle. You've got to assess the deal, secure the deal. You then need to trade the deal. And what we're going to do is go through each one of these sections and work out the, the kind of process behind each one. So we're going through finding deals. So we've got Rightmove and Zoopla. I usually look for properties on Rightmove and then I'll sometimes use Zoopla, not the valuation tool. Don't, don't listen to the valuation tool. Zoopla's got no idea what a property's value is. They will just take a half a mile radius and if it's a two bed terrace house, they'll just say, right, well, within half a mile, what are all the two bed terrace houses going for? So it's just too, it's too broad. It doesn't actually know what it's talking about sometimes. But I use Zoopla to see things like previously listed images. So if something's been listed on, on Zoopla and then it's removed from the market or it's sold, there will still be a record of that on Zoopla, which we can, I'll show you in a bit. So this is what I would call, the, these two things is what I would call um, third parties. I, I'd be working with third parties to find those deals. So what other kind of third party platforms are out there where you are going to find property deals? That's not necessarily because you've got third party and then you've got direct to vendor. So in terms of third party stuff where it might be through an agent or somebody else, what other strategies are there to find deals? Um, I find with on the market, it's really not as easy to use as, as Zoopla. It's definitely not as easy to use as Rightmove. However, like you say, there are some agents because they charge different amounts. So Rightmove charge one and a half thousand pounds, one thousand six hundred pounds per month to have an account on Rightmove. Zoopla charges about five hundred pounds a month, and I think on the market it's like a hundred pound a month. So what what happens is if you've got cheap estate agents who are on a shoestring budget or they're trying to cut costs. I don't know why they do this because everybody's on right move, but they'll cut right move out and they'll stop that as, a, as an expense and they'll just advertise on Zoopla and on the market. Sometimes they'll even cut Zoopla and just try and do on the market. Actually, just because it's not on right move doesn't mean it's not there. It could actually be that it's put on on the market, a platform like that. The reality is, not a lot of people use on the market to actually find properties. So you, you've got a, a lot less competition looking on on the market than you do on Rightmove. So it's a good, it's definitely a good platform to use. Any other third parties? Estate agents, yes. Anything else? What are we all here to do? Yeah, so this is if you're obviously finding a deal. It doesn't work for if you're sourcing a deal, but it's a way of finding deals for yourself or there are a lot of people out there who are dead hungry, dead passionate, and they're putting, putting things out there, they're getting deals done, but they've got no buyers for them. So sometimes it might be worth connecting with deal sources and saying like, you bring me the deal, I'll sell it to an investor and we'll go 50-50 on it. So you can also work with and collaborate with other deal sources to sell deals. On that, just be really careful with who, who you work with. Just because so many people, I get sent stuff all the time and I've had to say, I'm not working with anybody anymore to do kind of co-sourcing. Because I used to spend so long <coughs> sifting through deals, doing due diligence, and then I'd be like, right, okay, I'll offer this. And they're like, okay, let me get back to you. I just need to speak to the guy who's direct on this. And I'm like, wait, so you're not, you're not direct to the seller? Oh, no, no. Are you direct to the agent? No, 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 there's another source involved. And it turns out there's another sourcer and another sourcer and another sourcer. And it turns out it was a property that was agreed at 100. And then somebody's trying to sell it for 105. Somebody else tried to sell it for 110. Somebody else is trying to sell it for 115. And so everybody's trying to take a chunk out of something and it just doesn't work. And whilst it might be tempting because you're getting opportunities through, they are the biggest waste of time. So be careful if someone sends you a deal, just say, are you direct to the agent or are you direct to the seller? before you get that 
make sure you know that before you do any business with them. Yeah, yeah, Con an agency agreement, contract with the seller would show proof of that or some kind of a communication. Or if they're looking to partner with you and you're doing like a 50-50 thing, why would they not introduce you to the agent? Just say, look, we're working together on this. Anything else? If you're looking for a rent-to-rent -rent deal, is there any platforms that people know of that you can use for that? That's it. Those are the two I was thinking of. Spare room and open rent. So these two are platforms where you can advertise to rent out a property. A lot of agents will use these, but you also get sellers that use them as well. And so you can get direct to agent, you can also get direct to seller on these ones, but it'd be through this kind of third party platform. This is good if you're looking for rent to rent deals because everybody's looking to rent a property, but it also actually is a good opportunity if you're looking for an opportunity to buy. I've reached out to people, I've been banned from spare room and somehow, no seriously, I can't log on anymore. I even tried a different computer and set up a fake account. It just doesn't work, They've just, they just know it's me and they've banned me from it. So, because I was just reaching out to people, sending messages saying, hey, would you be interested in selling? I managed to get a couple of deals done before I got kicked off. So just when you're reaching out to people, read their terms and conditions and make sure you do it in a sneaky way where they can't pick it up. It's a great opportunity to reach out to people. I've got some deals done. Try not to get booted off because you can't get back on, I've tried. Seriously, I'm banned for life, I think. Open Rent, yeah, it's another great platform. You can get direct to sellers. A lot of them are agents on there now. So those are what I would describe as third party opportunities, third party ways of finding and securing deals. If you find this information helpful and you would love to come along to one of our training days like this one that you're currently watching where you get a full day learning all about property deal packaging or one of our days where we're teaching about property flipping, then click the link in the description and find out a bit more. Now, with all of these, you will be dealing with a middleman and an agent, and I'll touch on how we speak to agents, how we control conversations with them. Anybody put offers through agents recently? Are you an estate agent now? Yeah, but I'm leaving, so. Okay, great, nice. Before you do, send us all deals, yeah. is that all right? Yeah. If I called up and said I want to put forward an offer, what would you say? What do I need to do? Yeah. Cash mm -hmm. What if I said, I'm not going to send you proof of funds, I'm not going to send you my ID, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll put forward the offer anyway, tell me what they say. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a, lot of, a problem that a lot of people face. And I'm going to teach you how to control the conversation because you can get around that. Um, and it's not even by trying to weasel your way out of it. A lot of it comes down to confidence. There was a guy who did last month's um, Deal Sun launch pad. He's gone off <clears throat> uh, to, he's just flying. He, he asked me about um, one of the deals that he had and he, um, he sent me a, an Instagram message and just said, oh, I'm, I'm coming up with a problem. Could you just let me know what you would do in this situation? Told me the situation, I told him how to deal with it. And he said, I've been able to speak to agents, put forward so many offers and I've not once had to put forward proof of funds We've secured a deal, we've just sold it to an investor, and the investor's paying us 15,000 pounds. I was like, flip it, hey, you need to be teaching me. And that's through an agent, and he's charging 15 grand for something that's on the market. I mean, I've, that, I mean, that's just insane. But yeah, a lot of the time, agents will be saying, and all these third party places will be saying, send me a proof of funds, send me a proof of ID, which is difficult because we're deal packages, we're not the buyer. And so it's very hard and you don't know, you might not know who your buyer is. So we'll work on that later. Direct to vendor is a way of securing deals where you're getting directly in front of the seller. How would you go about doing that? Letters. Word of mouth. Yep, letters. <laughs> you can be very targeted with your letters. So there's a platform called Stamp, S-T-A-N-N-P, stamp.com. You can use that where they will, you write up a letter, they will print it and post it. You can target a set postcode or postcodes that you're interested in. So let's say I was interested in M33 and I wanted to send out letters to that entire postcode. They would print and send, and I think it's something like 
34p a letter to print and post. And you can and you can send that out to everybody. That's going to cost you to target decent sized postcodes, it's going to cost you quite a bit of money, a few thousand, a couple of thousand pounds probably. Now, that is a great way of doing it. If you know, right, I really want this postcode, then it works, it makes sense. If you're not 100% sure, I've done it and lost some money before, I've done it and made some money before, it's a bit hit and miss with it. Something that you can do is be more specific. I've done it where I've gone round houses and anything that looks really run down and battered, I'll just post a letter through there. Um, you can also be targeted in that sense where if you get the address, you can then go onto a site called Land Registry. Just type in Land Registry into Google and it'll pop up. And you can pay three pounds to get the title deeds, the information on who the owner is and where that owner lives. Because sometimes the house might be run down and it's empty and the person who owns it lives in, in another part of the country. And so you want to be sending a letter to them, not posting it into that house. Also, you can do leaflets. If you get a deal agreed and you get to sell a property to an investor, I would then be sending leaflets and letters to 20 houses to the left, 20 houses to the right, and all the houses across the street from it. So this, this house number, we just got it sold and we sold it for this much money in this kind of time frame. And you can target areas that you've, you've got proof that you've sold something in that area. Anything else for direct to vendor? Facebook ads, yep. Under that is also things like Instagram ads, it's the same platform. Open rent, spare room, if you are direct to the seller, then you can just do that. Um, Purple Bricks is another one here where it's a third party, often through an agent, but sometimes you're direct to the seller. And you can actually, I've done it before, where I've just gone onto Purple Bricks, messaged all the people that I knew were the owner, and just said, what's the lowest you could accept on it? Didn't even look at the property. Just ask that one question. What's the lowest that you could accept on this? The other difficulty with this is they actually do need proof of funds and you, and you can't put an offer forward. There's nobody to pick up the phone to and say, can you put this offer forward? They, they need you to upload your proof of ID, proof of funds, proof of address, all of that stuff onto Purple Bricks for you to put an offer forward because they'll tell you to put it through on the Purple Bricks platform. Yeah, so that's something we do now. If it's absolutely essential, and, and they say, no, we, we need proof of funds. Yeah. I just send them our company's proof of funds, yeah. my ID, yeah. all that stuff. And then we just say, oh, we're buying it in a different company and it's my business partner who's the company director, so we'll send you through their stuff. But in order to just get the offer through the door, sometimes it's just easier. But I've had to do that twice in the past 12 months, for as long as I can remember. I've had to do that twice. So we've got Google Ads. Has anyone used Google Ads before? LinkedIn. Yeah. You could literally search. If you know what area you want to go to, just type in on Google Landlord Blackpool LinkedIn. And it'll just come up with a big old list of everybody who says they're from Blackpool, who says that they're a landlord, and all their LinkedIn profiles. So you can contact them directly there. Within this is all the other social media media platforms like organic content so youtube instagram facebook all those things if you're constantly posting about it your friends and family might be selling they might pass somebody on to you that you can speak to directly that's another one friends and family so just by posting regularly um, people are aware of what you're doing if you're the 7.5 percent deal packaging business and you're shouting about that all the time, it might be that your friends eventually say, do you know what, I'm interested in a buy to that. You seem to know what you're talking about. What's this whole 7.5% thing? Like, could you explain that to me? Just by posting regularly on social media, it's getting out to friends and family, it's getting out to your audience online. It might be that nothing comes back, but it's getting it out then, letting people know that that's who you are, that's what you do. So that in a year's time, two years time, they go, oh, wasn't Jack? Didn't he say that he bought a house? We, we're thinking about selling. I wonder what he'd pay for it. So just, yeah, word of mouth. Tell people what you do. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. And remember, if you are interested in learning about property, whether it be investing, flipping, deal packaging, we're running training events very, very soon. If you, so if you want to come along or at least just find out more, click the link in the description and we'd love to tell you more about it. But until then, please just subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I'll see you in the next one.